Well, I, I, you know, I just see this whole thing as a as a move by the shadow government of our of our country and the deep state, all of those who have vested interest in perpetual wars and things of that nature, trying to get rid of truth uh, across the board so they can spin a narrative and manipulate the people of the country any way they want. <clears throat> Case in point <clears throat> is uh, with with the, for example, the alleged visit. Uh, by Manafort into uh, C. Julian. That, that, of course, is just a simple attempt at connecting Julian with the, with the uh, uh, Trump campaign, and that in turn with an allegation of being working with the Russians because they fed the, the data into, into Julian. <clears throat> so that would give them grounds for impeaching him and getting rid of him because he is actually a potential disruptor of this entire program that they've been, I call it the happiness management program, where lots of people make lot, lots of money, but, but a lot of the people who are not part of what I call the department of just us, meaning there's certain people who are given uh, uh, credit for like, like uh, uh, Hillary when she was excused from all kinds of crimes, right? <laughs> because she was Hillary and a, and a member of the department of just us. The rest of us poor suckers are not. We we just take it in the back side, you know, but uh, uh, <clears throat> so uh, I would point out, though, that there's some things that people here aren't talking about because they're inconvenient, uh, inconvenient regulations in government. For example, uh, if you're talking about uh, whistleblowers, whistleblowers are required by working for the government to report fraud, waste, abuse and corruption. Now, that's a requirement for them to have employment with the government. But when you do that, then the agencies that they work for come down and, and, and hammer them. And that's a violation of other regulations covering whistleblower protection, except in the intelligence community. That's where the exceptions are. Uh, but I would also show and say that, in the, in the, for example, uh, when uh, uh, Edward Snowden published or released all of that material to be published uh, on the spying programs of the NSA, that gave me the opportunity to uh, read into the court record in a sworn affidavit, all of those charts and things that, uh, that related to a lot of the spying capabilities I, in, I worked and developed for NSA. Uh, it allowed me to read that into a sworn affidavit uh, where it's basically swearing that these, these uh, agencies are violating the constitution of the rights of the United States citizens. Uh, and so I did that. And so the government, their, their tactic is they've got to keep me out of court and out of testifying because then it will be uh, on the record and somebody will have to address it. And that's what they don't want to do. They don't want to address all the crimes they've been committing in the public forum. And so my, uh, my uh, objective is to push that just like Julian does, try to push the truth out so that, so that you know, people in the country have at least some basis of making a, some reasonable decision based on knowledge of what's really going on, not, not this hidden agenda that the people are spewing up at them. You know, it's like they're treating them like, uh, uh, I call it like Pavlov's dogs, because they're just repeating things over and over again from many different directions and expecting everybody to believe it without challenging any of it. And that's really where I find the, the objective. Like for example, uh, the allegation that the DNC uh, uh, emails were uh, hacked by somebody in Russia. Well, some of the people who are looking at the data now are finding what what uh, is called FAT, I think FAT32 format, uh, which is a file allocation table format. That's a format used to index data on a storage device, which means and implies that those data, that DNC data was taken down onto a thumb drive or some other quite a storage device that was attached to the computer. So, I mean, you know, that's another fabrication that these people are, are putting forth. I would also argue that in some of the cases, like in the Manning case and in the case of uh, uh, Edward Snowden and others who are releasing classified information and publishing it, there's another regulation that people are also ignoring, and that's the Executive Order 13526, which covers all classification of material in, in the US government. Uh, section 1.7 of that says that you cannot classify, maintain classified or not declassify material if it is evidence of a crime, fraud, waste, abuse, corruption, 
em embarrassment to a person or an agency and several other things. But the point is a lot of the material that was published from Edward Snowden and also from uh, Manning, were, uh, there were ev evidence of a crime. The collateral murder movie was, was uh, a straightforward war crime. I mean, those are crimes that people should be prosecuted for. And, it, and by those regulations that governed classification for the U.S. government, they must be declassified. And so, therefore, there's no real violation of anybody's right. And besides, all the things that have been uh, discussed, I have not seen any damage to their capability to do any kind of intelligence analysis anywhere in the world. I mean, so <clears throat> when they publish stuff that, oh, we're looking at emails and phone calls and so on, well, everybody knew that already. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, there's no surprise to that. They certainly, the terrorists have known that all along. Uh, and, and, you know, the fact that it was kept, the fact that it was being done was kept from the U.S. public because they didn't want the U.S. public to know that they were a part of this spying program. I mean, uh, the idea that they, that they had, don't have the capability to do it is just nonsense. I mean, we had the capability to do that in 1999. All we had to do was have space and power and we could collect everything in the world. There was nothing to limit us to do it. And we had we had do, done the development to sessionize material up the fiber networks and up in the World Wide Web, and certainly the capacity to tap all the phones was already there. It was not a, it was just a matter of having space and power and, and equipment to do it, and that was not a problem for us at the time, and it certainly isn't a problem for them now. So all of this is really a fabrication to keep everybody ignorant, uninformed, and just so you'll follow the instructions from those in power.